His Excellency Mr. Toke Talagi, Premier of Niue. Your Excellency, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam. Heads of State, Prime Ministers, Heads of Diplomatic Missions and Representatives, Excellencies, Distinguished Delegates, Ladies and Gentlemen. Warm whanalapala here to from the Government and People of New Wing. I wish to extend my sincere gratitude to the people of Copenhagen for their gracious hospitality since we've arrived. We have traveled a long way to attend what we believe is the most important and historical meeting. From where I've been sitting in my small island country, it is difficult for me to understand the complex nature of the many different options being put up by the major players without a point of reference. For my purposes, this point of reference is the IOSIS position, which has been amply expounded by my fellow IOSIS members. It is clear that many positions have been proposed in an effort at protecting the economic structures and systems and lifestyles that each and every major player has in place present time. Any sudden moves which may cause further uncertainty and fear will only harden each country's position. It is also clear that the sceptics and opposition political parties have been shamelessly using this hiatus and atmosphere of uncertainty to create political and climatic change discord at efforts and instability. This is also not very helpful. The other factor which appears to have complicated this scenario is the current economic and financial crisis, which has prevailed and assailed all of us over the past year or so. This state of affairs has, been created such, has created such a degree of uncertainty and instability that any factors such as climate change, greenhouse gas emissions, has added to the fear that we all have about our economic futures and current status. It is therefore unfortunate that we have been placed in this position at this particular point in time, which by any standard measure is considered very testing. To have the worst economic downturn in years, plus the uncertainty of financial markets, and now this very important and time-limiting climate change phenomena makes me realize that sometimes we can either be the worst time to be a world leader or the best time. Some may even call, call this showing your mettle. I suspect that if we only had to deal with climate change, with business as usual, without the economic and financial challenges, then we would all be leaving this meeting with a great deal for the planet. In an environment of economic and financial stability, I suspect that the outcomes of this meeting will mirror the economic and financial well-being of all countries, with countries taking greater confidence and bold decisions. In that respect, this meeting has come at the wrong time in its history. Negotiations and good faith consultations between parties, excluding any party to substantive documents, will cause suspicion and, reef and rifts. This is completely unnecessarily and not what we want nor desire at this meeting. So what does the planet Earth make of all this high-level negotiating and diplomatic dancing on her behalf? We can all see that Mother Earth will continue her own agenda and make appropriate changes according to whatever we deal or deal to her. We have already given, been given the diagnosis by the scientists and the prognosis is grim. 
Mother Earth will continue to adjust and make appropriate changes to whatever else we provide or abuse her further with. We, her custodians, the guardians for our home, have let her down. We have used and we have abused her. We have used greed and unsustainable business practices to justify this abuse. We have marginalized ourselves in this process. We have been the cause of the biggest self-inflicted damage ever caused by any natural being on this planet, our home. And yet, we still seek to negotiate the terms of treatment to the diagnosis by taking our measures or have the medication, if you wish, than what is recommended by the scientists. Without a firm stance, we are merely accelerating the inevitable. Must we continue to act as though we are in denial and agree to have measures? There are many of us, particularly from the very small and vulnerable island states, who have already suffered severely from Earth's adjustment mechanisms. There are also many who have suffered severe flooding sea level rise, category five cyclones, devastating fires, long periods of devastating droughts. And many more are aware that our climate has and continues to change. What other evidence is required? We still act as if nothing is happening. The hidden changes which we have never really seen in terms of any physical manifestation in the fragile ecosystems, from the smallest plant and animals to the largest oceans, may make it too late to make the changes now for the future to come. Yet, we still don't take any real measures. Let us also remember the psychological and debilitating effect on people due to the effects of climate change from severe cyclones where it affects national psyche and our economies as a whole. What will it take before we decide to take action? So what do we do? Let us make a stance here in Copenhagen. Let us be the ones in this history to take responsible and meaningful action rather than merely talking let us remember this as a Copenhagen meeting, a hallmark on climate change and stands out in history. Let us prove to those who do not believe we can take many meaningful action wrong and show them that we united to save our planet and our future generations. Let us be the ones who heed Mother Nature's warning and let our future children be the ones who look upon us here today, know that we chose to make a stand. 